Hey guys, welcome to the Awakening 131. Today is going to be mind blowing, and I don't know about you, but I'm going through a mind blowing awakening. And there's no wigs today, there's just teddy bear protection um, of a tiny, not even a little child that's coming up, but a baby, a fetus that's coming up. Okay. And so hang on a second. Before I go any further, I'm going to introduce you to Myrtle. This is Myrtle, named after Myrtle Fillmore from Unity, the bunny. Myrtle Fillmore healed herself um, when she was told that she was going to die at a very young age. Right, so this is Myrtle, my bunny. And at the moment, I feel the need to have her with me, to hold her. Now, everything that goes on here, I teach what I learn. And if any of you are going through a really, really difficult ascension like myself with roller coasters of up and down, and yes, I do look like a teddy bear. Someone said, I look like a teddy bear today. Then you will be interested in what I've got to tell you. And I teach what I learn, right? So what I'm gonna say is I started talking about the wound twin survivor syndrome because I think it's something that no one seems to know about the same way as they don't know anything about therapeutic immunity. They don't seem to know anything about wound twin survivor symptom, syndrome. They don't know what it is. And, and uh, it's very, very important to figure to know about this because um, a lot of you are, believe it or not. Now, a lot of you are older and so it can't be proved. And there may have been rumors that you were a twin and the twin died or, or passed in the womb, but I know for sure that I am. And I figured this out a long time ago with a friend when she went to Scotland. And I couldn't deal with my feelings. I couldn't deal with it. It hurt so much. I didn't understand it. It wasn't just pure codependency. I missed her. It's too much, you know. And I went inside. I did hypnosis on myself. And there it was, there was me. Still hurts. It goes way beyond the void, right? And we're gonna talk about the void today, the void. Now it goes way beyond that six, seven year old that was taken to Israel and lost everything. This is some a, a, a tiny fetus. And this is why I don't agree with abortions because I felt everything 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 when my twin left and i'm very 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 young fetus a few months maybe three not maybe about a month even maybe less but all the feelings were there already the huge attachments twins you see them they're together they they they're like one one one. Now, th there may not have been a heartbeat to detect yet, but I was one. One with this sibling who happened to be a brother, a boy. I know. I know exactly who it was and I know who it is in this life. I've talked to them about it. And we're not together as friends either. And so that person gave me the gift of feeling this huge void. So Everything's a gift, all right? Everything, everything that you're going through in the ascension, be grateful for because the pain is going to be unbearable. And I was on my knees on the floor, clutching Myrtle because I cannot cope with the pain. And that is not bipolar, that is not mental illness. That is, I lost my twin, all right? And no one ever told me or work through it with me. I did some work with it and it's helped me function, but I found my twin again, my sibling in this life, I found them and then I lost them. And so the pain is in unbearable. I'm talking about a physical sibling here. I found that energy, that consciousness again, makes perfect sense now. And that friend that went to Scotland gave me the opportunity to understand that I am a wound twin survivor. 
and the womb twin survivor has the same abandonment issues, eating disorder issues, um, um, takes on the personality of, because it was a boy, I have more masculine in me. Um, I'm built with very, very long legs and thin hips. And um, you take on, and, and I was a massive baby because I was supposed to be born with a brother. And all through my life, from the time I, I didn't want to be born, I didn't want to come into this planet, onto this planet without him, without the twin, right? I was supposed to have a brother. I would never have gone through some of the stuff I went through. Well, that's what the personality is saying, because we would have protected each other. He would have protected me because he would have been my twin. Now, whether that would have been true or not, the personality is saying yes. I'm not sure. But what I'm saying to you is the void inside. I have a void as big as the Grand Canyon, right? Now, I always thought it was my seven-year-old. It's my seven-year-old with the temper. She's the one with the temper. And what seems to happen every time Lauren feels attached or connected or at home in any way, hmm, the seven-year-old starts to shift and doesn't understand it. And she has these huge expectations because she doesn't understand how to have a relationship. And in the therapeutic community, they used to say to me, Lauren, you do anything for a family, which is true until I, I figure, I'm figuring this out now. This is the ascension. And I want you to think about, are you similar to me? When you start to bond with people and feel, wow, I've got my family now, do you let go and let your seven-year-old or six-year-old or whatever come to the surface? And the minute that seven-year-old realizes that she can't always, she can't have what she wants again, because she never had what she wanted, then the temper, her, her paddies come out and she doesn't have any empathy and then whoosh. And guess what happens? She manifests more loss. And then the grief last night, because I was cut off another group on Facebook because I'm the entertainment, I'm not being a soldier. So it wasn't, a, I hadn't upset them by upsetting people. All it was is I wasn't doing research and I wasn't acting like an Intel soldier. I was an entertainer and I was telling them about Baba Bertha and leap up and down with your knickers in the air because that's all I'm doing now in order to be what I want to be in the ascension. And the soldier that I am is an entertainer. You can be both with balance. But that group is all about intel. And so someone was very unkind. They didn't even ask me or tell me or ask me and say, Lauren, do you mind not posting Baba Bertha and, and things about laughter and leaping up and down with your knickers in the air? Because we're all about intel and we're trying to bring up all the stuff of what's really going on in order to understand that we're going to be okay, that this is what's really going on with the kids and the tunnels and Trump and everything. But I couldn't live up to it because I don't want to anymore. I want to be in my truth, which is ENSA, the entertainment groups, uh, ENSA, entertainment and the war. They used to go around entertaining, check it out, ENSA. I am the ENSA of World War Three. And they didn't accept that. So one person, for some reason, decided, boom, to block me, cut me off the group without even saying to me, Lauren, please don't put those messages, that, which I thought, thought was very cruel. The ego saw it as something very cruel. The personality went into total meltdown, couldn't stop crying. I was channeling, and I tend to, do, something inside me channels uh, grief, Swahili and Arabs, Grief, pain, suffering, abandonment, death of families. I couldn't stop crying and channeling. Lauren had gone. It was just these, de not demons, they're not demons because they're not scary. They're just in a lot of pain and suffering. 
So these were people that, you know, souls that couldn't move on and are coming to me because I was in that space to bring them through. And the pain of being cut off this group who I considered a family. See where I'm going? The seven-year-old had a family again. The pain and the suffering. Couldn't cope again. And so she lashed out on Facebook and lashed out at the person that gave her the biggest gift of all to understand what happens whenever she starts to feel safe in the family. She lets go and she does things. Oh, they're going to love this. They're going to love a bit of this. They're gonna... She doesn't realize that this is, again, a lesson for the seven-year-old who thinks she's found a family and she hasn't. Because what is a family? A seven-year-old needs that safety and security to grow up with mommy and daddy and grandparents and, and uh, friends and safety in Dublin, like me, yeah? And then you take that away from that seven-year-old and you plunk her into wars and abuse, and that's it, she's lost. So that seven-year-old who was screaming, she hasn't got a clue how to be in a family situation. Lauren does, because Lauren learned in the therapeutic community a lot. But when the seven-year-old, um, Lauren, the adult, knows, but when the seven-year-old feels too comfortable, she lets go completely. That's it. All the love, the heart opens, whoosh. And she, do and she doesn't realize that people are going to hurt her because people are human. Lauren, the adult, has gone by then because little Lauren has found a family. And so she just lets go. And the minute the expectations are not met by that family, the same way she got hurt as a child, the temper comes up. She has a paddy. And guess what? People can't cope with that paddy because she's not really their family. She just thinks she is, right? And I'll talk about this thing, what is family, another time, because I want to focus on the void. The void inside the seven-year-old is so big because of what she lost. However, Lauren, the personality, has an even bigger void. Now, Lauren's personality, the fetus that lost the brother, thinks, this is in 3D, that she has lost half her soul. When the brother died, left, I felt it. I felt that, that him go limp. I, I felt that body go limp, and it went went and there I, I was this little fetus stuck in the womb knowing I wasn't wanted or loved I could hear the shouting and the screaming and the fights and I get rid of it and because my mother suffered and dad was too protective over mom I could hear it I could hear everything I felt unwanted and I was going to be born with a brother and then he went and I can feel it. Oh, my God, it hurts. So the, fe the child, the Lauren, that wasn't even Lauren yet, the fetus. That's where it goes back to with grief. Yesterday, last night, something wasn't right. I was channeling all these Swahili and Arab and not dangerous, but unbearable, tortured grief. And then I called Martin and started talking to him about something that's going on with someone who I miss, who I feel is that brother that was, we've talked about it. And um, Martin listened. I thought, I don't get it. What's wrong with me? And I left it and I felt okay. I was able to go to bed. And then today, Martin came around. And he brought this, <laughs> and it's really, really helping to get the tension out of my neck and my shoulders so I can sing. <laughs> you see, it's clearing because it's all tension. Anyway, Martin was chatting to me, and we were talking about family, how to deal with this child more. Uh, when she thinks she's lost a family, she goes into pure grief again. So thank you to everyone who's blocked me and let me go, because now I can feel those real feelings, and that's the gift. This is wonderful. Get yourself one of these. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And um, so Martin 
was chatting to me and he was using this on my shoulder to try and get the tension out. And I started talking to him and I had the stream of consciousness like I do sometimes where it got to the real issue. And I said, I'm going now. And I couldn't find my glasses. And it was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Where's my glasses? And something inside me was going crazy. And the void, and I suddenly thought, okay, you're going to sit with this. I sat with it and I was on the floor just screaming because I was the fetus again back in the womb. And I thought, I've got to teach this because you've got to feel everything if you're unhappy. If you're feeling such grief for certain people not being in your life or certain friends you can't be around or certain connections you've made in your life. I'm talking about physical. I'm not talking to those guys from the Twin Flame community, which I'm one of them. I'm talking about physical twin, right? When you've actually lost a sibling. Now, if you can prove it, because there were scans you could prove them with, please confirm it because that is your issue. Possibly might even be that, you know, you might have to go further back. But to me, the pain I feel here in the whole of my core, my shoulders, my lungs, and the cat couldn't sing because it was all blocked, was the pain of the fetus, for God's sake, the void of the fetus that wanted to be born with a brother, that thought he was going to be born with a brother, a protective brother, was a little bit older, but not as strong, and so they left. And I had guilt survivor as well. I had to survive. I'm the one who survived, so I also was born with guilt. <laughs> you see? Loss and guilt. What a great start for Lauren, eh? Now I'm writing my book, How to Say Say in the Crazy World, and I touch on this as the baby, but this is much deeper, and so I'll have to go back there and adapt it. And so you need to figure that out. Are you a womb twin survivor? Because I am. The personality and the consciousness was already there. Because of course it doesn't come, you come with it. So I cannot ever agree to abortions anymore because I heard everything as a, a fetus who was under a month. I knew everything, I heard everything, I felt that body of my sibling leave, I felt it. I felt the, 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 the loss. I felt him leave. And one minute he was there and we were connected. And guess what? It's happened again and again and again in my life with people. And one particular person who I discussed this with, who is the what would be my physical twin. We discussed it. And I don't know what they feel, but I know what I feel. And so this void that I was left with when I couldn't find my glasses and Martin had left and I sat with it and I cried and then Martin came back and held me. He said, just, just hold me because, and I felt it and I can feel it now. That's the ascension. I've done work on this before, but not like this. Because the loneliness that I'm living with is not natural. I'm not a monk. And I can't be with anyone except Martin once, maybe twice a week when he comes here to bring food and chat and gives me a hug. And so the void is so big. Now, I'm lucky I'm not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a sex addict, but I am an addict because I have a void that's so big. It's massive. Absolutely massive. And maybe I am a sex addict because I lived in a marriage with total celibacy and that's not balanced. Maybe I am. I'm not a food addict anymore. Maybe I am because I can't eat half the time. But I'm not a drug addict. Oh, aren't I? 
on these drugs? Oh, the stage and singing and acting and going on and on and on and on, not stopping the programs. I've got life, I've got life goes on all night. Why? Because I'm an addict. I'm not an addict. The personality is an addict. So I needed to come on to the awakening to tell you that none of you are mentally ill. Addicts, yes, we're all addicts. We all need to fill that void inside. And the void I have is massive because in 3D, I believe the personality believes in 3D that it is half a soul because it lost its twin physically. It's half a body because a twin is like two people in one. I come on here because I want you to feel, feel what I feel, feel it. You feel your issues. If you were a twin, you're two bodies in one. So in 3D, you really believe that you're half. So if you feel that you're half and it doesn't matter how much work you do, it could be that you lost a twin, a physical brother or sister so check it out nine and ten women with this bpd condition were actually womb twin survivors it's on the internet the vanishing twin that vanished that left and in those days there were no scans and mom couldn't prove it but there was always rumors that there was a brother and a miscarriage i remember dad saying it once or twice and not only that there were rumors Mom was so big that she was carrying twins. From a very early on, they already saw mom was very big. And of course, there was no heartbeat yet. All right. The physical wasn't strong enough. But I knew because I felt everything. And that's why you can't abort a baby. You're aborting a real person. Cells that feel and hear and smell and touch, I went back to the womb and I feel everything when I'm there now. And you also have the guilt survivor because you survived and your brother didn't or your sister didn't. And why do you have, you, that is not your fault. It's not that he, he was just not as strong and he left. And you repeat the patterns. You meet people that are not as strong as you. Lauren, strong, strong immune. Something about Lauren needed to come here. <laughs> needed to come here when she came in that year, which we don't talk about. That other soul couldn't, that other part of Lauren couldn't come here to this world, to this planet. They kept, they'd have to leave. And Lauren was strong enough. And that's not something to be guilty about. It's something to be proud of. But the guilt and the fear and the grief created huge rage because there's a hole. Not in 5D. There's no hole in 5D. And I told you, I am the opposite to Anna Brown. The ego is everywhere and the hole is massive. Massive massive i can't eat today i haven't even had water today i can't face it the whole wants me to be it doesn't want me here i don't want to be here the personality the whole is so big it doesn't want to be here that's the personality that this little twin this fetus you don't lock someone up for that you talk to that fetus. You try to understand that little fetus's pain. Right? You don't put them away. You don't medicate and numb them. So everything you go through in life, everything I've gone through in life and now, this unbearable loneliness that you're going through, make you, you're not robotic. How can you be robotic with so many feelings? 
You're the opposite, Lauren. I'm proud of Lauren because I am on here to teach and you will not get salvation, not until you look at what it is I'm triggering. And if I trigger in you, your fetus, that you lost your life or you left, for whatever reason, you've got those issues of leaving, that feeling of guilt because you left your sister in the womb or your brother in the womb, you will have guilt of the, the one that left. And again, I'm talking about physical here, the 3D physical body that left, the mind that left, that died, and then came back. And you've got karma. So people that come, people that reincarnate, they, they have karma because they left. Could it be that you're staying in a situation because you feel guilty? because of karma, because of the past, because things happen that you feel you need to make up for it. I am having the most incredible meditations and visions and uh, people I want to talk to because they're so powerful. And I, I can't tell Martin, he doesn't get it. I saw myself die on a battlefield with a sword in my heart where it hurts all the time. And that person, a friend was standing over me, crying their eyes out. She was crying. He was crying, whatever. Crying, crying, crying. They Because they tried to revive me. And when I came back in real life, all they wanted to do was protect me and love me. And uh, they looked at me and said, you're alive, Lauren, and came and hugged me so hard that I felt, oh, my God, I'm home. And if you're watching this, you'll know exactly who you are, whether you're a he or a she, because you're aware enough to understand this. And that's why the pain is so strong for me and them. Because they're doing their work, I'm doing my work, and we can't be together because you've got issues to sort out. But literally, they were trying to patch up my heart. And I talked about that yesterday. The ones that are too protective over me, that harm me, they try to patch up my heart because they saw me die on the battlefield with a sword. Oh my God, I hurt and it hurts. That poor heart. I had a sword stuck in me and they're trying to patch up my heart ever since they met me. And they hurt me because they can't because they're trying to make up for the past life and the karma. You see, this void is coming from past lives. And, but today I'm talking about the fetus. And so if you have a, you are a wound twin survivor and go on there and check it out. There are books, there's websites. Today you need to nurture yourself. And so I haven't got up and feel. Feel that pain, feel it. For me, it's stuck in the whole of my neck and shoulders and the whole of this. And I've spoke to someone who suffers from serious fibromyalgia. And I said to her, is it possible that you're a wound twin survivor? And she's also got issues with protection and all sorts of issues. Wound twin survivor, check it out. Vanishing twin syndrome. And we're not mad. Maybe in the next few awakenings, I'll be telling you about what you really are. You're not mad. You're not mentally ill. You could be that you lost your twin, your sibling. People won't understand you. So give them, show them. It's on Google. I never even knew it existed until I had that experience. And so I'm all cuddled up like a teddy bear. It's weird. Someone came back into my life who I, Yasmin, and like my Mexican sister and um, I had an affair when I was in Israel in my 30, early, early 30s with this guy called Emad. He was an Arab Israeli. And Yasmin was there and we had so much fun. She was born in Lebanon. And um, everything's coming back to be cleared, whatever needs to be cleared. I miss him. I wonder what happened to him. He wanted to be a doctor. It was an amazing time, a Jew and an Arab. Beautiful, you see, because that's what Lauren really is. 
And Yasmin was my Mexican sister. And he was hilarious. He was so much fun. I did I danced Arab dancing because Lauren is a multi-dimensional being with a tiny fetus and huge grief deep inside. She's still a tiny fetus calling for protection. But then the minute you show her that, the fetus is there, the grief. Don't leave me. And guess what happens? They leave every time they leave. So Yasmin came back into my life. She misses me. Can't wait to see her on Zoom at six o'clock. Probably that nearly now. I want to be Molly Coddle today. I want to be loved. I want to be held. I don't want to cook myself a meal. I want someone to cook it for me. I want someone to make me a cup of tea. I want someone to make me a roast dinner. Like Baba Bertha said. I want to be held. I want to be safe. I shouldn't say I want, but it's what I'd like to feel safe. I'd like this fetus to feel safe in her skin. Never felt safe in this body ever. This body has played up ever since I can remember. It was too big for me. So heavy and big. I was born a huge baby. I can show you a picture. I'll find a picture. Huge. That's because I was supposed to be a twin. I've known this now for about seven, six or seven years. That's all, only six or seven years. I figured it out. But it hurts like hell today. And that's okay. I lost my family again. That personality thinks they've lost their family over and over and over. I lost my brother over and over and over. It always seems to be a masculine because the, my twin was going to be a boy. Elvis lost his twin. And that's why he had serious disorders and why nothing was ever enough for Elvis. And if I was that way inclined, I'd be strung out now on like Bob Burr you're a lovely lad or a huge amount of alcohol so I'm learning to be with that unbearable void it hurts it hurt. the body hurts pain body hurts let's just sit with it weird because people have said to me you've always got to have big dramas in your life and I've always thought about that that's so why I go on the stage I'm an actress but I didn't make this up I really did lose my twin brother in the womb and I already attached well because we came from the same energy we came from the same energy and split into two bodies. As I say, this twin flame thing, you need to look into it. Could it be that they were actually your twin? In a past life or check, ask your parents, 
Could it be that you lost, especially if you're older? Could it be that you lost, that your mum lost a child? If you're older and you meet that person in real 3D and you just know there's something there, you can't figure it out. And the pain of not being around them is because they were actually your real twin, sibling twin. Years and years and years ago, you would have been born together. Or in another life, you were born together. Because if there's no time, you wouldn't have left in another dimension. If you're ascending, you understand this. If you don't, you'll send me abusive messages. I'm not mentally ill. None of you are. You have issues. Shock. You might be a womb twin survivor. You might be um, a vanishing twin syndrome. So you're left with all the guilt. I always felt like um, there was a boy in the in, in the somewhere in, in there. But I don't know why. I've always got the feeling, and I am very masculine in a lot of ways because you take on the traits, you see. It's an amazing subject and it's a lifesaver because you can't medicate it. You have to understand it. And why medicate the void? Feel it, scream it, laugh it, dance it, sing it. Sometimes when I sing, I can feel the void so strongly and I sing with it and then I come off and oh my God, the drop. Singing is a distraction like everything else. It can, it can be. It's where you are connected. You are connected, but when you can't stop, when you're exhausted and you still can't stop, that's a distraction from the real feeling. So I challenge you, find your core of your pain. Find it. Do a timeline. If it doesn't go away, then you haven't found it. I'm going to test it in the next few days, obviously. Am I going, I'll come out of this, I'll distract, I'll do encounters at seven o'clock with my beautiful encounters family. Where I am the mother, <laughs> the mama, mother hen, taking care of them all. Uh, on Zoom. And I'm going to talk with Yasmin, hopefully. I want you to watch this, and I, I'm going to watch it tonight when I put it on. The Awakening, I watch it, and it's like, oh, my God, you got it, Lauren, you've got it. You've got it. And when I get it, I want to teach it because I want you guys to be happy, and I want your ascension to be easier. And if I trigger people because ego is coming up, then you need to look at that, please, because that means you're starting to realize that you've got feelings. If I don't trigger you, it means you're numb. If you don't trigger me, it means I'm numb. And you can't ascend being numb, it's impossible. Your heart has to burst wide open. And on and off, that's what's been happening with me. And it's dangerous when the heart bursts wide open with me because I don't know where to stop. The heart just keeps going and going and giving and giving and giving and giving. And giving. Given and some people think I want something from them or I'm giving them in order to control and manipulate them and I'm not, I'm not, it's just love because I don't get anything back most of the time from these people anyway, but I still give, I don't know how, but I still do, I still want to, I still love them enough because I want to give, I still give because I love them and I don't understand that, that's just pure unconditional love that I'm learning and I was doing that with this group but they didn't want it they wanted intel so everything is a, a lesson so I'm gonna go now and I have to make a meal because I've got to nurture Laura and make sure she gets her vitamins today and water and tomorrow night I'll be back with the jukebox so I've got some new singers 
If you've got any new music you want me to play, please send it to me. Because I've got to work, because I can feel this all the time. I don't want to. In increments. I can't. Maybe I need to. Someone said to me, sit with it for two weeks. That's your salvation. I could do that. I've done it. Ten day retreats. But then I wouldn't be doing anything with moving on TV and how will I progress? It's about balance. So I do my work on here with you. Look me in the eye. And go back. Back, back, back. Where is your core pain? When I do this, I feel so connected to people and humans. It's the only way I can connect to you guys. I'm real. I'm not a robot. I'm real and I'm ascending and it's a roller coaster and I'm scared and I'm angry. And I'm tired and I'm pain body is in so much pain. And I'm happy and I'm sad and I'm lonely and it goes all over the place because I'm ascending. That's not mental illness. And I'm now in the core of huge torture. I feel tortured. I feel that. Why did that move? My table's moving around. That little fetus is in torture because of losing her sibling, torture. And that's why I feel torture in my life, a void, massive void. I cannot fill it with anything. And that's why all these experiences have come to me to wake me up. So if you need to wake up, look me in the eye and find the core of your pain. Use me, Lumiere, the angel that I came here to be, to help you feel Create and do what you love once you feel that void. Create from that void. You will create amazing things and love from that void. You may not be able to get rid of it, accept it. See, that's maybe the answer. Maybe I can't get rid of the void. I need to accept it and love it. Just love it because it's not real, because it's only in 3D. And A Course in Miracles hits the nail on the head today. The affirmation today is I choose the second place to gain the first. I choose the void today in order to get peace. Yeah. Do not run away. Look. See your own void in my eyes, your pain, your suffering. Look, what do I trigger in you? Do you see this stupid old woman cuddling a cuddly toy sitting here talking to you? Or do you see that fetus, you, yourself, that baby, that child, that unloved little person? that you are. Martin can be around me because he has been loved since he was born. He is the special child, he's so loved and he's so loved now. He's a very, very loved child ever since he was born and he can be around me. Those who can't be around me are little children that were never loved. I can be around anyone. I'm not afraid of those feelings anymore. And when you're ready to come and see me, it'll be because you're ready to face those feelings when you look into my eyes. 
I love you so much, everyone that I'm here to teach. I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm a wound twin survivor, not me, the personality, an actress, a singer, a dancer, a diva, a victim, <laughs> a love addict, a food addict, a creator, a drain, just like she climbs a tree and scrapes her knee. Her dress has got a tear. She waltzes on the way to mass and whistles on the stair. And underneath her whippers, she has curlers in her hair. I've even caught her singing in the abbey. She's always late for chapel and her penitence is real. She's always late for everything except for every meal, eating disorder. I hate to have to say this, but I very firmly feel that Lauren Maria, not an answer to the Abbey. I'd like to say a word on her behalf. <laughs> Maria or Lauren makes me laugh. <laughs> How do you solve a problem like Lauren? How do you catch a cloud and pin her down? How do you find a word that means Maria? A will of a wisp, a flibbery jit, a clown. Many a thing you know you like to tell her. Many a thing she ought to understand. But how do you make her stay? And listen to all you say. How do you keep a wave upon the sand? Oh, how do you solve a problem like Lauren? Maria, Martin, Jenny, Sandra, Carol, Sharon, Janie, Mike, Nikki, any of you? Any of you, I don't need to say your names. You know who you are. How do you hold a moonbeam? That's it, a moonbeam. In your hand. You can't. You can't get me to settle. You can't get me to have my feet on the ground or yours. I hold down a job, except now when I've got to take on that grounding. When I'm with her, I'm confused. This is what people feel around Lauren. That's why I love playing the part of Maria. When I'm with her, I'm confused, out of focus and bemused. And I never know exactly where I am. Unpredictable as weather, she's as flightly as a feather. She's a darling, she's a demon, she's a lamb. She's a pest of any pest, drive a hornet from its nest. She will drive a whirling dervish out of whirl. She is gentle, she's wild. She's a riddle, she's a child. She's a headache. She's an angel, she's a girl. <laughs> How do you solve a problem like Maria? How do you catch a cloud and pin it down? How do you find a word that means Lauren? A will of a wisp, a flibberidget, a clown. Many a thing you know you'd like to tell her. Many a thing she ought to understand, like how to earn money, how to sell, how to be in a marriage, how to not lose her temper. <laughs> how to settle, how to feel safe. How do you make her stay and listen to all you say? How do you keep her wave upon the sand? How do you keep a wave? Her wave upon the sand. You can't, she's whooshing everywhere. So those of you who get frightened of her, this is me. Why do you think I love playing Maria and the sound of music? How do you solve? A problem like Maria, Lauren, you, her, him. 
how do you hold a moonbeam in your hand? And you can't, and I can't sing at the moment because it's all stuck here. All right. So thank you very much for watching The Awakening. Find your song. Who are you? That's my song. And then the little child, the 13 years old, they used to run down the street. More hills arrive with the sound of music because she was free. But in order to get free, you've got to feel and heal. And it hurts like hell. And everybody hurts sometimes. So respect that in you. Everybody hurts sometimes. Everybody hurts. Cry, boy, cry, girl, cry, cry. Feel and heal, feel and heal, feel, feel. And all I've done is feel and heal and cry and scream and feel and feel and feel. And now I'm teaching you. Curl up into a little ball and don't forget to do halt. Don't get too hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And my voice is going because all of this should be like this. <laughs> like that. You need to be balanced and straight and feel and heal. When you're acting, a good actor will have pauses in between their sentences. Not Baba Bertha, because that's the character. But even Piaf would go, my little girl, I held her. Her head was bobbing up and down. I took a scissors and cut a lock of her hair, my sis, <laughs> my little Cecile. <laughs> that was the name of Edith Piaf's baby, Cecile. My little Cecile, funny enough, that was the name of Edith Piaf's baby. I cut a lock of her hair. She didn't know who I was. So weird how life repeats itself in different ways. I don't know why that came to me, but Edith Piaf, if you watch that scene, which is talking about the baby that died of meningitis, she was already in a world that had nothing to do with me. Strange how life imitates art. Strange. Don't know where that came from. I love you guys. All I do is what I know and I'm learning. My fetus is learning to feel the pain. And I couldn't have children either, which is interesting. How can a fetus have a child? How can a six year old have a child? How can a seven year old have a child? My mother had a child and she was a seven-year-old, spoiled, scared little child that had a child. And so was my father, a little five-year-old that had a child. This is a long awakening. I don't know if you watch it, but I just made a connection, a very strange connection here. Life imitating art. Marcel, the love of Piaf's life, and Cecile, her baby. I think it was Cecile. God, it's such a long time since I played the part. Yeah, I'm nearly sure it was. 
back, the little girl. She didn't have, I didn't have enough money to bury my child, so I went on the street and gave me money to bury my child. I gave her to the undertaker. He put her in the ground. That was the last time I ever saw her. That's the life story of Edith Piaf, Love Conquers All. Her baby died of meningitis. Her little girl was two. And I tell her story in Love Conquers All. And I came to that through saying pauses. A pause. When you act such a deep scene. And the audience go, oh my God, that person can really act. You feel it here, like when she does Mon Dieu. Marcel, she picks up that rose and she starts to tear. This is me directing it, tearing the rose. She's left. That was the last time I ever saw him. That night is plane crash. And suddenly she's overwhelmed with guilt because she told him to take the plane. Take the blame, Marcel, take the blame. She's overwhelmed with guilt. And why am I doing this? I'm doing this because when you're a good actor and you want to draw the emotions, you pause. And when you want to ascend, you feel and heal, feel and heal, feel and heal. And if all you can notice is the fact that I've lost teeth, then I don't know why I'm bothering to talk to you because all you are is physical. And the fact that I can't settle here I need a good dentist, a holistic dentist, and we're in lockdown again. It's nonsense and money to sort my teeth out until the bed beds get here and I can grow them back. Feel and heal. The opposite of Anna Brown. She's already there. That scene, those scenes from Piaf. All they asked me to do is laugh. Laugh, laugh, laugh. How can you laugh when your heart is broken? Mm. Laughing and singing. Singing and laughing. In and out of hospital. That was when she was, I was lucky. Piaf wasn't. She was in institutions all the time. They didn't let her feel. They didn't let her heal. I was lucky. I would go on that stage and I would tell everyone. I do the breakdowns on the stage so I don't have to do them in real life. And guess what happened the minute they took the stage away? Lauren started to do the breakdowns on the, in the world again. Not on the stage. There's no stage here, Lauren. And that's when the child came up again doing the breakdown so I'm going to end there I love you lots so everything's a distraction your job your family Chris you're running around trying to figure that out at the moment sit feel the pain watch the awakening I won't let you get away with it anymore I love you bye la vie en rose and je ne I don't regret it. I'm grateful.